Welcome back. Joining us now is the man who cast the deciding vote in favor of the restaurant ban on the Board of Supervisors and what was his final meeting as a member of the board. Supervisor Mark Ridley Thomas, for at least the next few days, represents the second supervisorial district, which includes Compton, Carson, and much of South Los Angeles. So, Supervisor, uh, first of all, thanks for taking the time. Let me ask you the same question. If outdoor dining wasn't a problem when the virus was receding earlier this summer, why is it a problem now? Well, I would simply um, I'll say first, thank you for the opportunity to be here again. Um, secondly, um, we've not seen uh, an uptick in uh, this virus as forceful as we are seeing, and we are doing all that we can uh, to make sure we uh, follow the best of the science that's available to us. People are dying. Hospitals are at the point of being overrun. We cannot ignore that, and the spread must be contained. And anyone contained, anyone who is prepared to deny uh, that that happens in the context of uh, local eateries where there is face-to-face um, -face interactions with no mask and the like, uh, is just simply in denial. That's what we're trying to avoid, deaths and worse. Right. Now, your colleague, Chairperson Catherine Barger, has argued that there is no data to support closing dining establishments, which makes the action taken by the board an arbitrary and capricious restriction. Your response? What's troubling about this um, conversation, in my view, is uh, the selective uh, information that's being invoked. Uh, look at the whole set of, uh, of data uh, that informs our decision, not one piece, but all of the pieces, and try to land in a place that squares with uh, public health. We know the sector, 50 and under, uh, that's driving it, um, and we know that they are, are infecting uh, persons who are 50 and older, and to the extent that that is the case, uh, the, uh, the test um, in terms of positives are off the charts. Uh, we haven't seen uh, this, and we expected to see it before. It didn't happen. It's happening now in a way that's just simply extraordinary, and we cannot uh, sit on our hands. We cannot ignore it. Now, let me just say, in addition to that, this is not a full-blown shutdown. Uh, and so what we are doing is trying to strategically and or, might I say, surgically, intervene, and so we slow the, the spread, contain the virus in the interest of the public's health. Uh, let's move on to something else. Uh, you're leaving the board after 12 years. One of the priorities over that time uh, has been criminal justice reform. Uh, you were instrumental in developing the Sheriff's Civilian Oversight Commission, uh, getting its subpoena power. Uh, there was jail reform, assistance to those who have been the victims of police abuse. But you now have a sheriff in Alex Villanueva who's been at war with the board and appears to have stonewalled the Oversight Commission. How should this be resolved? What is going on? Uh, I would say, um, amounts to what might be described as a mini constitutional crisis between the governing body of the county of Los Angeles and the uh, principal law enforcement entity in the county of Los Angeles. It should not be the case, and we ought to have a way to resolve it that is prescriptive, that is ensconced in law. Uh, which means that the sheriff would not be elected but appointed. It means that there would be uh, procedures for remove, removal, and all of these things are currently under consideration. And so I began my work on law enforcement accountability uh, in the 80s, when you were a young man, Colin. Oh, excuse me. Uh, when, when we, I began in the 80s working on these issues with Daryl Gates. Uh, and we've made a lot of progress. There's more progress to be made. So your colleagues the other day said a lot of nice things about your work on uh, mental health and trying to find solutions to uh, the homeless crisis. Of all of it, what has transpired that has brought you the most satisfaction? It's hard to deny the, the transformation of the Martin Luther King Medical Campus. 
a new state-of-the-art hospital, a new outpatient center, a new public health center, a new psychiatric urgent care center, a new medical office building uh, surrounded by uh, a university that's focused on uh, producing doctors, nurses, physicians, assistants, uh, aimed at serving the underserved. There is no uh, medical campus in the county of Los Angeles that is comparable to what is at MLK now. I cannot overlook the issue of homelessness and the progress that has been made there um, and much more to be done on that front. And then the Crenshaw line, well, that will now come to fruition we'll come next year with Crenshaw to LAX. And so those are some of the things that I've been able to do in, in addition to affordable housing and in addition to child welfare reform, it's just been a phenomenal opportunity uh, for me to serve the people of the county of Los Angeles. LA County Supervisor Mark Ridley Thomas, who is now headed to City Hall, where his career started uh, oh so many years ago. District 10, by the way. Thanks for taking the time.